Okay, this video is gonna kind of show you around your TI-84 calculator. It also works mostly for the TI-83. There's a couple of differences um, that you'll see. Um, it also works for the TI-84 plus um, and a couple, um, if you have this general stuff down, then it works, um, it's very similar for um, the Inspire and a couple of the other versions with some differences um, in between. But um, just wanted to make you aware of different things on the calculator. So first of all, the on button is down here at the bottom left. Um, if you want to turn it off, if you notice that you have these second buttons and these alpha buttons, depending on which calculator you have, this color will be different. So anything that is above the black buttons in blue, it, you use that by hitting the second button and then any thing that's in green to get to that one, you use the alpha button and then hit the button that you want to get to the green one. Um, so, and then, so if, since it's off as blue, we do second and then off, and then that will turn it off. Okay. Um, um, generally, if you can't find something on the calculator and you know it's on the calculator, you can always go to your catalog. So your catalog is above zero, and then it's in alphabetical order. And if you would like, say, for example, to go down to S, you can just hit alpha and then the S button. Alpha, notice it has an A over here that you're on the alpha and then the S button and it will jump down to the S's and then I can look through the S's. Um, to get out of anything that you're looking to get out of, you can use the second and then the quit. Um, so you have that. Um, another thing that is common with these calculators is changing the brightness. So if you hit second and then up, notice there's a number that will flash here. So mine's at seven. And notice if I keep going up that it gets darker and darker. And then you can go back down and get it to the brightness that you want. Notice the second button shows up over here. So if you have the arrow over here, the next button you hit will you, you do the blue word above it, right? So it did the inverse cosine on that one. And then again with the alpha, it has the A here as well so that you can kind of know what you're at. And then the normal blinking cursor is just the normal button. Um, so if you turn your calculator on and you can't see anything, you can do second up several times. Oops second and then up and it will change the darkness. Um, also, if your calculator doesn't turn on, um, you can check the batteries in the back, these batteries here, and make sure they're in the correct order um, and that the positives and negatives and that you have all four batteries. Um, so people like to take the communal calculators and do stupid things to them. So um, that is what you have for the calculator. So you have that brightness. Um, you also have the mode, so generally speaking, your mode, um, these are the defaults that I have. So you can go normal, scientific, and engineering. So if you're in science class and you want to do, um, you want it to spit out numbers in scientific notation like 10 to the, or 4.7 times 10 to the third, right, it will do that for you. Um, we're not in that mode because we don't need that right now. Um, the float, I like to keep mine on float personally. If you um, like your decimal points to a certain number or you're always rounding to a certain number, you can do that and it will automatically round to your third decimal. Um, again, I just like mine on float. Um, radian and degree has to do when you're using sine, cosine, and tangent or your inverse sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, they're two different kind of angle measurements. So um, when you learn about angles, you'll know if you need to be in radian or degree and you need to use whichever one you're in. Um, there's four different kind of um, graphing that you can have on here. So the one is the default is function. Most, um, a lot of the work that we do is with functions. Um, the par is for parametric, um, the pole is for polar, and the uh, sec is for sequences. Um, so generally it's on function, um, but that is just something that you should know about. Um, connected and dot, the connected, um, if you were graphing, um, it will connect all of the dots to make it look like an actual line or a, you know, a parabola or whatever shape it is, it'll connect the dots between it. If you wanna just so it's showing the dots, then you hit dot. Um, sequential, um, I personally prefer this one. This is also in relation to graphing. Sequential means that it will graph the, uh, it, like if you have two different equations in here, it will graph them sequentially. So it'll graph y1 first and then y2, which is nice when you go to your graph because then you can tell which one is the first one and which one is the second one as it's drawing. Um, generally speaking, we're just in the real. You can switch it so it's an a plus bi 
or in this format where you have r times e to the theta i. Um, so um, I would say most are in this. Um, this is something that you can use. It's a personal preference. Full uh, just means that you have the full screen on wherever you're at. Horizontal will split the screen. Oops. Horizontal will split your screen. So notice here it gives half the graph and then half where I can do my calculation. So like five times two plus six times eight minus 12. You know, and then I can do that, but then it will also show the graph. I have nothing in my graph, so if we do 3x minus 4, let me change my window, um, then you can look at the graph and be on the home screen at the same time. All right, so you, have, you can be looking at two things. Um, the other one that you have is the GT, that's uh, graph and table. So if we go here, notice it gives me the graph on the left side and then the table on the right side. So that's a second way that you can look if you're needing to look at both things simultaneously, which is just kind of nice to have. If you have the TI-83, you won't have the rest of these. Um, the math print will tell you, like it will use pi in there instead of um, multiplying it out. Um, so the math print is nice. Um, the, it will give your fractions as the numerator over the denominator, um, and you can have it as the whole number and then the um, numerator over the denominator. Um, you can get it so that your answers are auto, that they're in decimal or fraction. Um, I like auto, and then there's a thing that I'll show you later um, that is the, how you can get a fraction. Um, I don't typically use these ones um, in your stats diagnostics. Sometimes you turn those on, so if you want to flip those on, that's you when you're in your stats over here and you're calculating these variables, it can give you the um, correlation coefficient. Um, so that is basically what you're going to need in your mode. Um, you can also set up how you want your graph to look like. So if you do second and then zoom, it will be formatting for your graph. Um, so the you want the rectangular because we're not on um, polar you can turn your coordinate um, axes on or off or not your axes uh, the I can't speak uh, just the coordinates so that they're on or off you can turn the grid so it's on or off the axes so they're on or off and the labels are on or off um, and I actually don't know what this last one stands for um, but you can turn your grid on so if I go to my it's got the little dots, right? If you do, the coordinates are on. Um, so it just gives you different options for your window, what it looks like. Um, I like my axes on. I just generally have it over here. That's just generally what I have, but feel free to change that. Um, you can also change where you want your window to start. So if you're here, it will start your table at zero, and then this is the change in the table. That's a delta. It stands for change, um, and the table is one. Um, typically, our independent variable is the x, and the um, dependent variable is the y. Um, so leaving those on auto is fine. Notice if I were to change this to five and I go to my table, notice that my x's go up by five. So if you're filling out a table and you need a specific distance between them, that's a nice thing to do so you don't have to keep scrolling down um, to find it. And if you're starting on a specific number, like say we were starting on 50, um, so I can go to my table set and then um, put my start at 50, and then you're going up by fives, and then I can check my table, and then everything is there, which is a really nice function to have to be able to work with. Um, another thing that's really useful is after you've done a calculation, if you're going to use that answer, so um, say we wanted to, um, I don't know what we did. Oh, I guess I can just show you that first. Um, if you want to do your previous entry, um, on the 84s, you can just go hit up on the entry and then hit enter, and it'll retype it again. If you're not on the 84s, the 83s can still do that by doing second enter, and it'll retype the last thing that you had. If I want the thing before that on the 83, you just do second enter again, and it will type the thing that you did before that, and then before that, and it'll just keep going back. Um, so if we have um, some... Thing in our calculator, right? So we have 43 30ths, just some calculation that had been done on this calculator. 
um, and we're adding all those fractions together. If I wanted to use that answer, so if I want to do two times that answer, so to write my answer in, you can use the second, and then above the negative sign on the calculator is ANS for answer. So two times your answer plus five, and then it will give it to you as your answer. Um, if yours is giving it to you as a decimal instead of a fraction, so say we did eight times five thirds plus nine, so that's a decimal. Say I want it as a fraction answer. If you do math, and then this first option is says frac for fraction. So you hit enter on that and it will change it into a fraction. Now you can also do this as one entire line. So if I go up here and then enter this again, and then I do math and then I hit enter on frac, it will just automatically put it in as a fraction instead of having to find the answer and then determine what the fraction is. Um, if you are, um, that's really nice when you're working with fractions. Um, if you um, are putting fractions in your calculator, remember that you're just using the divide button. If you like how it looks like we normally write them on paper, on the 84s, you do have the option to do alpha and then y equal, and then it brings up this um, menu here, and you can do it um, where you have the numerator over the denominator, or you've got a mixed number. Um, or you've got a mixed number and you want it in, or sorry, you've got it as an improper fraction and you want it as a mixed number. So, um, so for example, on this one, then it will switch it to 22 and a third because this was an improper fraction. So if I want to type in a fraction, I just use numerator over denominator and then it looks like a fraction. So I can do five thirds plus nine and then hit enter. And when you do this way, it automatically puts the answer as a fraction, which is nice. Um, but know that that option is there for you, um, and it makes working with fractions really easy. Now, um, for example, let's pretend that I put this in and then I realized that I forgot to put a negative. So I'm just gonna use second enter, and I'm gonna go back using my arrows to say that I wanna go back. And then here, if I were to just type uh, negative, it would write over the five, so we want to insert. So in order to insert, we're gonna do the second button, and then where it says DEL, that's delete. Above it, it says INS for insert, so we're gonna do second INS and then put negative. And then it will give me um, the answer that I have now, which is really nice if you've typed a whole bunch and you realize that you typed something wrong, you don't have to retype the whole thing, you can just hit second enter and then just fix the problem that you have. If you put an extra thing in there and you don't need it, you can go back and you can hit delete. Delete just hits one character, clear hits the, clears the whole line. So if I hit clear here, that will clear out the whole line as if uh, instead of if I just hit delete, it will just delete that one character. So if you don't do the second insert, it will write over it. But if you do the second insert, then it will not write over it, which is a nice function to have if you happen to put anything in it incorrectly. Um, and then um, if you are in, so say we're here, this is our graph. Um, we have the zoom. These are nice to have. Um, typically I use zoom six to start with. Um, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can have zoom decimal, it's like 3.4 th and 4.7, I think. Um, or it makes it so that it's square, there's one for doing trig, there's an integer one, a stat one, which is really nice when you do your stats here, a zoom fit, um, which if it's a big graph that has lots of curvy parts, it'll make it so you can see all the curvy parts, but it will like, it's usually pretty zoomed out. And it can do it so that you've got quadrant one and we've got a whole bunch of different options. Um, so zoom six is what I typically start with. So if we do zoom six, um, then it will give me this graph right here. Zoom six goes from negative 10 to positive 10 and negative 10 to positive 10. Now the, the picture here is rectangular. So notice these are less, um, the tick marks are less apart than this, uh, than the X axis. That's because um, it's a rectangle shape and not a square shape. Um, but it still is fine. You just need to be aware of that detail. If we look at the window, notice it tells you your X min and X max. The X SCL stands for the scale. So this is saying that each tick mark is worth one um, and that we're going from negative 10 to 10. Remember that your X's are from left to right. So this is how far left, this is how far right, this is how many you're counting by. For the Y min and max, this is how far you're going down, this is how far you're going up, and this is how far you're counting by. Um, you don't need to mess with the resolution or the delta X. You can just keep those um, as the default. Um, 
and that makes it so that you can have that. Now, for example, if I wanted to go from negative 10 to 10 by a scale of one, but on my Y's, we're going really high and I wanna go up by 100. If I were to look now, notice here that you can't tell where your Y values are. You can't see, you can't count by the tick marks because there's 100 of them and so it just looks like this black thick line. So what you can do on the window is you can go down to your Y scale and I can change it um, like we could do by 25 and then I would have four. So this line right here represents 25 and then 50, 75 and then 100. Right, so then it's easier to see, so I like to change my scale. It makes it nice. Um, this is essentially you're zooming in and zooming out like your, um, that you would do on your phones by just going like this and that, but they don't have that capability. Right, so this tells you how far left and right. This tells you how far up and down, and then it tells you your scale. Right? So that way it makes it nice so that you can see um, kind of what's going on with um, your graph. Um, and you can move it accordingly. Um, if you get an error when you, um, so let's see if that causes a problem. I don't have anything in my stat plots. Um, if you get an error that says there's something on, you wanna check on your Y equals. If your stat plots are on and you've got something in your stat plots here, um, I don't have two so it's not graphing anything. Um, it will potentially mess up your window and cause problems. So you can come up here and just deselect it to not highlight it. If you're graphing two things at once, so say we are doing x minus five squared um, plus nine, right? And say I just wanna look at the, t the new one, but I'm gonna go back and use this one for something. You can deselect, so put your cursor on the equal sign and then just hit enter. Notice it will deselect it. So then when I go to the graph, it's only showing me the parabola, right? Um, and we picked a pretty good window for this because remember that we had gone up to 100. If we zoom six, notice that we're just gonna get this little teeny part right here and we don't see much of it, so we would wanna go up. So if I wanna go up, I would have to move this number, so then I could try by 50 and maybe we go by fives instead, and then we hit scale or graph, and then it graphs it like that. Um, so that is kind of um, something that you can have. You can also, if you want to shade, you have to know which direction you want to shade, but you can come over here and hit enter and it will shade above this. So then if I go here, then it will shade above. Um, so that's a nice thing to have. Um, and then you can put it back to normal. You can have it so it's dotted like that one. Um, again, then if I want to go back and I want to find this one, then it shows both of them. Notice it graphs sequentially, so it does the Y1 first, and then it does Y2. That's what I was talking about earlier when this part right here, sequentially, if I do simultaneously, it'll draw both of them at the same time, right? Um, and then if we um, go and we switch it to graph table, um, and we hit graph, now I've got my graph and my table Notice we're starting at 50 and going by fives because that was what our table was set at from before. So if I wanted to change it, I just have to go there. Um, so those are the general things um, that are really good to know. Um, when you are done with your calculator, you can reset the memory. So you do second and then plus, and then you want to reset. So we're gonna hit number seven and we're gonna reset um, all RAM. And then you hit two to reset. You can either hit down and enter or you can hit the number two. Um, so my RAM is cleared. If there's something that's weird on the calculator, usually resetting to the defaults. So here I can just hit two and then hit two to reset. And then all of my defaults are set. So then notice here it cleared my RAM so I don't have anything in here that I had. Um, so that's a quick way to clear everything out of your calculator. Um, and then of course you can turn your calculator off and that's the general gist of some helpful things on your calculator and kind of how to use it.